For centuries, monsters and humans have been at war, and no one remembers the reasons why the war started. Eventually, both humans and monsters got tired of the feud, and so the war ended. And after a while, the enemies of Lindworm became closer to each other. The Minotaur girl learned of her pregnancy at a human doctor's examination. Our heroes, Dr. Glenn Lintbite and the charming assistant snake girl, Safantina Nakes. After the clinic closed, Safantina shared her thoughts that she was embarrassed that someone's wife was moaning so hard from the doctor's touch. The examination took up all of Glenn's thoughts. It's a positive trait of his to be able to focus on the procedures. The assistant asked him not to call her Safentita, but, as in their school years, just Safi. A letter arrived from Dr. Cthulhu at Central Hospital. The colleagues traveled to the arena to examine the gladiators, at Cthulhu's request. The clinic had to be closed for a while. Safi didn't like the idea, but Glenn felt that he was only able to open the clinic because of Dr. Cthulhu's support, and he thought the trip would help him gain experience in healing. Third-rate gladiator Tisalia Scythia, Glenn, and Safentita would be doing the examination in place of Dr. Cthulhu. Some of the monsters were surprised that the doctor is human and so young. Tisalia is the most important among the gladiators. Yes, it was noticeable. She is the sole heir of the Scythia Transportation Company and was very proud of it. During the examination, the patient started flirting, which made Safi a little angry. Next in line was Tisalia. She asked if the doctor liked centaurs like her. Since she was the heir to the company, someday she would be the head of the centaurs and would need to marry and have an heir. At the moment, she was looking for a husband, but none of the candidates suited her. If she had a choice, she would prefer the young doctor. Safentina took the situation into her own hands and stopped these musings, changing the topic of conversation to the increased size of the centaur. The inspection of all the gladiators was over. Tisalia had organized everything for the examination. Glenn would like to say goodbye to her, and Safi offered to send the centaur a letter. The doctor was approached by Kay and Lorna. They were from Tisalia's entourage. The girls were concerned about the health of their mistress. Safi and the doctor tried to reassure them by telling them that Tisalia was perfectly healthy. The girls were not reassured by this. They treasured their mistress and shared their doubts. During the night, Glenn pondered something. Safantina came to check on him. They are childhood friends and Safi knows a lot about the doctor. Glenn was disturbed by the conversation in the arena. The entourage told the doctors that their mistress has not been able to win fights in the arena lately. It never happened before and she was the strongest in the third division. The girls don't know why this is happening because despite good heredity and daily training, Tisalia can't win. This evening, the lady lost again. This month, she has no wins. Although her behavior doesn't suggest that something might be bothering Tisalia, Safi suggested that maybe it's just pride that keeps the centaur from admitting her problems. It might be completely unrelated to Tisalia's illness, but Glenn doesn't quite agree with his assistant. Snake suggested a drink and left to get a glass. Glenn pondered what might be wrong with Tisalia. He hadn't noticed any symptoms. Dr. Cthulhu hadn't noticed anything strange. Maybe they'd missed some minor detail. Safi brought a drink to which she added an ice antipyretic. It takes a long way to get this crystal. However, Safi asked to drink the drink, it would make the doctor feel better. Safentina herself had a not-so-light drink. It was fire dragon whiskey. It had been given to the doctors by Kay and Lorna. Safi wondered if Glenn had realized the reason for Tessalia's losses. Not yet, but the doctor didn't think it was related to the disease. But the doctor could help a healthy monster as well. The strength of the drink affected Safentita's mind. She tied the doctor's tail and talked about her jealousy. She doesn't want to let Glenn go to socialize with Tisalia again. Did the horse princess really have a crush on the doctor? Safi herself did not even think to fall in love with the doctor, unlike Tisalia. The girl now will not charm but crush the poor guy. Glenn's warm tone and a request to help him melted Safi's anger. A girl can't drink too much. During the training session, the doctor stopped by to see Tisalia. Glenn explained that the servants were worried about her. The reason for Tisalia's failures is her hooves. As it turns out, dirt ages the hooves. Tisalia is not wearing horseshoes, so she has an imbalance between her front and back hooves. You can trim the hooves and pick up horseshoes. 
No matter how much the princess resists, the servants have already paid for the procedure, and Tassalia has nowhere to go. The centaur is intensely afraid of pain. Like a child at a dentist appointment, she began to lash out. Glenn got to work at this time, the hoof cleansing enraged the centaur, and the glowing hooves brought fear. Safi calmed the princess's tantrum by gagging her and tying her tail. This made it possible to finish the procedure calmly. The next day, Tassalia was able to make it three wins in a row. Safi suggested that Dr. Cthulhu was losing her grip, for she didn't even look at her patient's hooves. Glenn, on the other hand, remarked that Cthulhu appreciated his patient's wishes and only did what they agreed to. Perhaps this was a test for Glenn and Safi. Tisalia was finally able to get into her shape and get her fourth beautiful victory. She was grateful to the doctor, which again made Safi show her jealousy and twist the poor guy. Safantina was sent as a child as a hostage to the Lintbite house at a time when war was still raging between humans and monsters. Glenn's father and Safantina's kin ran an eastern trading company and were going to secretly arrange transportation. The parties honored the terms of the agreement and a year later the war was over. No more hostages were needed and Safi returned home. A few years later Glenn entered the academy to become a doctor and began to learn how to treat monsters. There they met again. Safi ran out of sunscreen. As if knowing this, Glenn walked into the snake's room with the issue. Sunlight harms the monster snake's skin and eyes. Her ancestors had a nocturnal lifestyle, but such a life was not for Safi. During the water walk, the couple tried to remember the last time they had just spent time together. They were now heading for the purified water in the Marrow Canal, the mermaid escorting them to their destination. This place was like a paradise for water monsters. After buying all the necessary ingredients, Safi asked to stop by the gift shop. The variety of goods made the snake dizzy and had a thousand desires to buy something, but in the end she bought only one bottle. The main gift for Safi was Glenn's company. There was only one gondola of doctors floating down the street. Turns out it's because there's a mermaid concert in the evening. The lights come on and the mermaids dance in the light. Safi was interested, but Glenn said they had a lot of work to do. The doctors were called by a girl water monster and asked the beautiful couple to look in her store, also adding that Safi would make a great wife for Glenn. Safi begged to come into her store, as she had already refused to attend the concert. Glenn gave in and agreed. Lulana Heine's mermaid was trading her singing for three coins. Glenn examined the mermaid, which made Safi jealous. She began accusing him of dirty thoughts and compared the mermaid's tan to her pallor. To stop the quarrel, Lulana told the couple a story about the Bridge of Lovers. During the war, a man and a mermaid jumped off it and left together, so this is where lovers get a blessing. Glenn didn't care for the story, unlike Safi. Glenn paid the mermaid for two songs, the first with coins, the second with an inspection. Glenn and Safi told her they were doctors. Lulana began to sing a mesmerizing song with her beautiful voice. No wonder she was invited to perform at the concert. Suddenly something happened and Lulana started coughing. Glenn decided to do an examination right away. Looking at the mermaid's tonsils, he saw inflammation. Listening to her breathing, Glenn heard no wheezing. The mermaid's gills were open even on land. The gills produced too little mucus, so the gills don't close and dry up in the air. This was the cause of the inflammation. It turned out that the mermaid had only been in the water for six hours, which is critically short for Lulana. But the mermaid had no choice. Her family had no money at all, but she had to take care of all her brothers and sisters. Suddenly, a human child was in danger on the shore. Lulana rushed to his aid. Doctors went to the shore. The mermaid, straining all her strength, found the child and pulled him to the surface. Glenn pumped the boy and he woke up. However, Lulana fell exhausted into the water. Glenn, not seeing her nearby, threw himself into the water. He assumed the mermaid's gills were inflamed and the water was filling her lungs. While still conscious, Lulana thought of her mom. She didn't want to die. Glenn would save her. He began performing CPR on the mermaid to change her breathing. He succeeded, but the doctor himself passed out. Safi pulled them both out of the water. The embrace of the mermaid and the doctor infuriated Safi. In the evening, Lulana's concert was held where she sang her song beautifully. Noticing the doctors at the concert, she thanked them for her recovery and said that she followed all the doctor's recommendations. The mermaid became embarrassed and dove into the water. Safi remarked that it was necessary to maintain a friendly relationship with the mermaid. 
On the streets of the city, a girl was chasing bad guys, and at the clinic, a couple of doctors were examining another monster patient and improving her condition. Miss Scadia Dragonfeld, the head of the city council, walked into the clinic. She is a member of a rare dragon race. She's been the head of the council since the founding of Lindworm. Without her, the city would not have reached its current greatness. Scadia came with her assistant and bodyguard Kunesina. She would relay the words of the lady. Kunesina lost her arm in a battle with bandits, so the mistress asked her to find the arm and sew it back in place. Kunesina almost caught up with the slave traders and killed a dozen of them. Dr. Cthulhu turned down Madame Scadia and recommended Glenn as the most capable apprentice. Turns out that Kunesin was human. She's a golem assembled from dead body parts. That's why she doesn't like doctors. Scadia left her assistant at the clinic. Without her, Kunesin began to say that she didn't need Glenn's help. But the doctor denied it, saying he couldn't help but honor Mrs. Scadia's request. Kunesin planned to find her arm herself and sew it back on. As she left the clinic, she noticed a strange person. Safi couldn't believe that Kunai could sew her own arm back on. Glenn, however, despite refusing treatment, decided to find the arm and fulfill Scooty's request, and he would leave the clinic to Safi and the little helpers. Kunason continued to follow the identity, but was attacked in an alley. Glenn, with no leads, tried to find her hand. Hearing a scream, he ran toward the sound. There he met Tesalia. She pointed to a leg lying separately. Examining the leg, Glenn assumed that the stitches had come apart due to the violent impact. Tesalia cried out a possible murder, but the doctor refuted that guess by explaining whose leg it was. Kunai at this time was crawling down the street, looking for her limbs. Suddenly, she felt someone touching her leg and pressing on the sensitive spots. Tesalia said that Kunai Sena was the gladiator with the longest winning streak of the first rank. She couldn't believe that someone could beat her. Glenn, examining the leg and the stitches, concluded that the body parts were not dead, but had a will of their own. Tisalia noticed that all the townspeople were unusual, but Glenn stood out from them, and at the moment he looked like a pervert. As long as Safi didn't find out about it, Kunison could feel not only limbs at a distance, but she could hear the voices of the dead people she was made of. It gave her a headache. Glenn searched for the arm. Lulana met the doctor and told him that there were rumors about him already rumored. The mermaid pulled her hand out of the water. Kunai began to feel her hand being rubbed. Lulana found the hand in the ditch. What was left was to find Kunai herself. The mermaid asked where their mistress was. The limbs pointed the way. Glenn found Kunai, who was already freaking out at the doctor's touch. He pulled out surgical instruments, the likes of which the golem had never seen before. Glenn explained that judging by the seams, it wasn't the doctor who created Kunaisen at all. The man was going to connect the vessels and nerves in the golem's body, even though she only wanted muscle connections. After a little thought, she agreed. Kunai's creator said she was the perfect person to be free from suffering. No pain, no suffering. Glenn painstakingly reattached the patient's tissue. His mentor said that if you suffer, you're alive. So he believes Kunai is alive, and it's his job to ease her suffering. After finishing reattaching the arm, the golem began to feel much better than before. At this time, Safi's drinking buddy came into the clinic, wanting to see Dr. Glenn. As she was leaving to go home, she said hi to the doctor and assumed that Glenn was cheating on Safi right now. Glenn was sewing up the golem's leg and asked her to lift her skirt. The touches on her leg, unlike her hand, caused a storm of emotion and moans from the patient. She could barely restrain herself from screaming harder. Saying goodbye, Kunai thanked the doctor and left. They were watched by a group of criminals. Glenn returned to the clinic and gave milk to the little helpers. Safi was waiting for him with the news of the pregnancy. The year spent with Safantina had a profound effect on Glenn. He became very interested in monsters and their way of life. It was an unexpected reunion. In a few years, they will finish their training with Dr. Cthulhu and open their clinic. And now the news of a pregnancy. But that's impossible. Lamias lay eggs, not get pregnant. Glenn decided to examine her. Under her skirt was a box containing an egg. A friend had brought it. Glenn assumed it was a harpy egg. Outside, Safi noticed people. They burst into the clinic armed. Safi fought them back, which gave them a chance to escape. Snake speculated that they might be the slave traders that Kunai had been tracking. She had just found the doctors. These slave traders capture harpies and transport them illegally. They force the harpies to lay eggs and then sell them to people with perverted tastes. This time, they were after the egg that Safi had. Kunasena sensed the slave trader's approach and knocked him out instantly. 
There are no extra people on the council to protect Glenn and Safi, so it's best for them to stay with Kunai for now. Most of the guards are involved in the operation to capture the slave traffickers. Glenn and Safi are also involved in this operation. Lulana made a deal with her mistress. In return for the opportunity to perform in the square, the mermaid helps in various operations. Glenn assumed that Skadia had taken advantage of Lulana's poverty. The mistress wouldn't deny it. Glenn was against such manipulation, but Lulana objected. She is not a child and can decide for herself what to do. The slave trader's lair was in the old part of the canal, so the plan was that the main forces would go head on and Kunai and the others would infiltrate from the rear, thus saving the kidnapped harpy girls. There was a trap on the bridge. The team was attacked by archers. Kunai covered everyone with her body. Tisalia and her retinue came to their aid, diverting the archer's attention to herself. One of the mercenaries began to talk about the similarities between centaurs and mercenaries, that humans and monsters should not live in harmony with each other, but Tisalia disagrees with him. All the inhabitants of the city live together. The mercenary launched an attack, but it was a failure. Upon arrival, the company is met by one of the slave traders. He is their leader. The mercenaries can only survive through crime. A fight broke out between the man and Kunai. This gave time for Mistress and Glenn to continue with the plan. The council guards began their attack. The dragon lady cleared a path to the door behind which the frightened harpy sat. Glenn said they were safe now. One of the harpies had a severe stomach ache. Dr. Glenn began to perform an examination. Her abdomen was bloated and hard. This meant that she had an egg lodged in her fallopian tube and needed it removed as soon as possible. Glenn began to deliver the baby, massaging the harpy's abdomen. Outside at this time, the bandits came rushing in. Safi and Mistress began to fight them. Safi thought about the two secrets she had kept from Glenn during the battle. Her terminal illness and her bloodline, her clan was practiced not only in pharmaceuticals but also in poisons and stealth assassinations. Her mother had once given her orders that Safi might have to kill the Lintbite family with her own hands if negotiations failed. Thankfully, that didn't have to be done, but would she be able to fulfill it? After all, after meeting Glenn's family, she had contracted an incurable disease. The mercenary stuck a poison dagger into the snake's tail. The poison began to take effect. Safi woke up in the room with Glenn. A dose of mandrake can't kill a lamia, so Safi is fine. The slave traders had been arrested and the harpy had successfully laid an egg. Glenn noticed not only the poison, but also noticed how she fought. It turned out that Glenn knew about Safi's mother's order and there were similar conversations among his family members. One of his family's servants had once poisoned a snake's food without asking. From that day, Glenn had become fascinated with medicine. Safi had gotten upset and tied the poor guy up and threw him on the bed, but the poison had kept her from reaching her full potential. Safi asked him to hold her tail until she fell asleep. His hand was warm and soothing. Safi's incurable disease is her love for Glenn. Glenn and Safi used Scythia's transportation company to travel to the Harpy village. Dr. Cthulhu sent them to the Harpies for a physical examination. The Harpy that gave birth to the egg was sent with the rest of the girls to the village. She had lost many feathers and would no longer be able to fly. Tessalia, by her diligence, tried to prove to Glenn that she would be the perfect wife for him. Suddenly, there was a landslide. A landslide fell on the centaurs. Kay got the worst of it. Glenn suggested she might have a sprain. The harpies flew to escort the doctors to the village. The village elder met the travelers and informed them that the injured Kay had already been taken to the guest house and they could begin examining the centaur. Tessalia had questions for the elder and asked Lorna to escort the doctor. Just as Glenn thought, Kay had a sprain. She needs bed rest to recover, and Glenn and Safi will give her painkillers and compresses. Kay was upset about her injury. Lorna asked her to take it easy and just rest. Dr. Glenn was giving all the harpies in the village a checkup. He was popular with the villagers. The harpies came to thank the doctor for saving them, except Ilya didn't want to come, saying she didn't want to see Glenn. The guy noticed Lorna and decided to find out about the relationship between Lorna and Kay. As it turned out, they were children of war. The centaurs were mercenaries. Orphan children were taken into the army. Lorna and Kay were taken in by a Scythian family. From that day forward, they were obligated to serve to Salia at all times. She interrupted their conversation. The princess lost Lorna and searched everywhere for her. She disappeared when Tessalia looked away for a second, but Lorna doesn't remember it. 
Tasalia is sure that something is wrong with her. She is constantly acting very distracted. And during the meeting with the elder, she was talking nonsense. Tisalia was negotiating the possibility of an air delivery service. It was a great idea. It's a very important negotiation, but Kay is injured and Lorna is acting strange, so Tisalia asked Glenn to examine Lorna. She can't imagine her life without her wonderful assistance. As payment, she offered white wine from a unique plantation. Safi was forced to agree. Glenn, on the other hand, believed that Lorna's behavior was due to Kay's injury. Centaurs are warlike, but can be sensual and sometimes cowardly. Safi knows a way to get along with sensitive natures. We need to shut Lorna out of the outside world. Glenn blindfolded Lorna to keep her from thinking bad thoughts. He also bound her body and pulled the whips towards him. With this, he fixed her skeleton to improve her posture. This procedure made Lorna feel much calmer. The positive effect was most likely due to the centaur's unusual tendencies. Tisalia hugged Lorna and said that she loved her assistants very much and wanted them to be happy most of all. Kay decided to thank Glenn for the help, even though Tisalia had already paid for the doctor's services. The centaur started thanking Glenn in their own peculiar way. The girls believe that if Glenn marries Tisalia, then according to Centaur custom, Tisalia's helpers will also become Glenn's helpers, and he can do whatever he fancies with them. The doctor was embarrassed by this, and broke free from the girls' embrace. Kay's ankle has fully recovered. If Mrs. Ilya would allow her to be examined, the doctors could return home. It turned out the harpy wanted to see Tisalia and talk to her. Opening the door of the house, they saw feathers everywhere. Ilya was highly irritated about something but allowed her wings to be inspected. The inspection caused the harpy pain. Examining her head caused her to tickle. To measure her temperature, Glenn placed his hands under the harpy's armpits, which caused her a flurry of emotion. Her temperature was normal but Safi was once again reminded to be careful around girls. Ilya was perfectly healthy, she was just molting. The feathers didn't fall out because of stress or illness. The harpy didn't believe it. She used to molt but she could fly. Glenn's words infuriated Elijah and she started kicking everyone out of her house. The harpy wanted to kick the doctor but Tisalia defended him. Harpies are hard to change her mind about anything. Tisalia decided to talk to her herself. It turned out that Ilya never missed gladiator fights in the arena. He admired how Tisalia fought. The harpy said she was a great fighter. However, in the arena, gladiators don't fight, they compete in their skills. Tisalia suggested a trial fight. The princess said that rude girls who are rude to doctors should be punished. In the end, the harpy was able to scratch the centaur's face, and Tisalia was able to put her in her place. Safi even considered putting the harpy to sleep with anesthesia for being rude to Glenn. That's too much. During the fight, Tisalia said that the harpy had no business being in the arena and would rather stay in the village. However, Ilya wanted to live somewhere else. A harpy just runs away, she needs a reason to leave the village. But if she flies away, she could be captured again by slave traders. During the fight, Ilya lost her feather. Glenn examined it and realized something. In the morning, the company searched for feathers with Elijah's coloring. Tisalia shared her thoughts that Elijah wants to find a place that has what she lacks here. The centaur princess is sure that Glenn with his kindness will be able to help the harpy. Safi clearly didn't like this sweet talk. The girls started a light verbal altercation. Tisalia asked Glenn not to forget about Safi. The Lamias were having a hard time in the mountains. One of the harpies reported that Ilya was missing from the village. The girl had always loved flying. She felt free and truly lived when she was in the sky. But now? She couldn't take off and she was forever chained to this village. She didn't understand how she was going to live her life. The company was looking for the harpy. Safi had located it. Now all that was left was to take the harpy to the village. Sitting in a tree, Ilya was capricious and swearing. Glenn reported that he had misdiagnosed her a bit. She wasn't losing her feathers because she was sick. She was definitely molting. The doctor understood the reason why she couldn't fly. Dr. Cthulhu knew about it beforehand but didn't warn Glenn. It turns out that the harpy has a special molt. She grows adult feathers. Her wings will be different from other harpies because Elijah has phoenix blood in her. This won't make her a unique creature but her wings will be special. Ilya will be able to fly when the molt is over. When the molt was over, the coloring of her feathers had indeed changed. Tisalia made a remark about the harpy's appearance. Ilya admitted that she had been very nervous during the examination only because Glenn had seen her lay an egg. Since Ilya was an orphan, it was important for her to learn about her ancestors and there was no need for her to leave the village anywhere. This was her home. 
As she flew upwards, one feather fell out and slightly burned Glenn's skin with heat, the flame of the legendary phoenix still burning in the harpy's body. Dr. Glenn gave the harpies tips on feather care and demonstrated the cleaning on a volunteer who enjoyed it indescribably. Many willing volunteers wanted to try it too. Safi and Glenn were discussing an early departure back to Lindworm as Ilya flew in through the window. She flew into the forest and got covered in some kind of sticky stuff. It looked like a fiber, not a liquid. Glenn said it's arachnid webbing. This web will wash off easily with warm water. The snakes got a bad feeling, and for good reason, three more harpies have come asking to be rid of the sticky web. Glenn and Safi will have to solve this problem, track down the arachnids and ask them to stop weaving webs near the harpies' village. The pair followed the tracks of the arachnids. Safi specified that the best way for the arachnids to create traps and ambushes. Glenn fell into one of the traps almost immediately. From the vibrations of the web, the arachnids immediately realized that someone was trapped. Arachnia is Safi's friend and drinking companion. Safantina explained why they were in the mountains, and Arachnia was excited to finally meet Dr. Glenn. Arachnia also turned out to be the lead designer of the Free Silkworm Society, and Safi orders clothes from her. Arachnia told her that she had heard about a unique harpy with phoenix blood, her wings are extremely beautiful, and Arachnia wants to incorporate the harpy's feathers into a new design and see the feathers in person. Upon seeing Elijah, Arachnia jumped on the harpy to examine the wings. Elijah absolutely hated it and rushed away from the spider woman. Safi told Glenn that Arachnia would not set any more traps, however Tessalia was caught in the web. A verbal scuffle ensued between the centaur and the snake. The princess advised to choose her friends more carefully, but Arachnia is not a bad girl, she just loses touch with reality when she's passionate about something. Tessalia, on the other hand, thinks that spiders can't be trusted. Glenn intervened in the girl's argument. Safi ends the conversation and heads inside. She is too exhausted, Tessalia thinks that Safi is overexerting herself for her favorite doctor. Glenn gave Safi a day off. He wants the girl to rest and have a good time with Kay and Lorna at the hot springs. Safi decided to accept such a gift from the doctor and relaxed in the warm water. Arachnia peeked into the treatment room. She was complaining of not feeling well. Glenn began to examine the patient. He saw no outward symptoms. Arachnia watched the doctor's actions. She was surprised that the man cared about monsters. Now she understood why Safi had fallen in love with the doctor. Glenn advised the spider not to stay out in the cold for long, and the girl offered to keep her company. They walked through the woods, and the spider was picking flowers. The doctor followed her only because he was worried, but since she was so chipper, there was nothing more to do with her. However, Arachnia had set a trap in advance so that Glenn couldn't get away from her early, and she lied about not feeling well. Spider Woman suggested that the doctor have some fun. Arachnia is very curious as to why her friend admires Glenn so much. Spider Woman has always liked to take what others desire. However, Glenn and Safi aren't dating, but if Arachnia wanted to possess the doctor, Safi would freak out. Thoughts of bonding with Safi drove the Spider Woman wild. This madness inspired all of the Spider Woman's work. She moved closer to the doctor's lips as Tessalia suddenly released Glenn. She stalked toward the couple and heard everything Arachnia was talking about. A verbal altercation began between the girls at the end of which Arachnia asked if Tessalia really loved Glenn. Why in that case she wouldn't run away with him, but because of her obligations to the company, Tessalia can't do that. The spider woman annoys the princess. A fight almost breaks out between them as Safi intervenes. She ordered the girls to shut up. Safi stated that Glenn doesn't have time for relationships and love. Glenn regretted not noticing his assistant's feelings. Safi squeezed the doctor hard, causing him to pass out. In the evening, Safi confessed her feelings to the doctor. Every day she has more rivals. The girl is sure that Arachnia will not take Glenn away from her, but she is not sure about Tessalia. Safi is scared that one day someone will steal the doctor away from Safi. Suddenly there's an earthquake. The elder suggests it's the giant's fury. Legends say the giants are angry that the harpies didn't sacrifice. Something terrible is heading for the village. Scouts report a giant deity is approaching. We must run, but where to? The harpies began to panic. 
Tisalia took the situation into her own hands, she sent Elijah to Lindworm and report the situation to Lady Scotty. Arachnia will also do what she can, she will use the webs to keep the harpy's possessions safe. Glenn and Safi need to take care of the non-flying harpies. Everyone has begun to fulfill their roles and prepare for the giant's attack. The villagers had already left the village. Glenn asked Safi if she had seen Tisalia. The princess at this time was walking towards the giant deity to give more time for the villagers. If she survived, she would propose to the doctor. Following the centaur came Safi. Did Tisalia really decide to fight the giant alone despite her fear? Glenn as the doctor can't stay away. The doctor suggested that instead of fighting, they should just talk to the giant and convince it to go back. Since none of them were going to run away, it was better to face the giant altogether. Tisalia gave in to their entreaties, but if a good deal couldn't be reached, Tisalia and Safi would enter the fray. The giant was very close, he was genuinely frightening. Glenn stepped forward and began to negotiate. He asked what the villagers had done to anger the giant. In response, the giant deity only sneezed violently. It turned out that it had heard of a doctor in the village and decided to come see him for a checkup. Ilya reported the situation to the mistress. However, Scotia replied that there was nothing to worry about. The giant of those mountains, Diona Nephilim, wouldn't hurt anyone. Glenn examined Diona on the special construct. The giant had a cold and a high fever. She had felt sick about ten years ago. At that time, little Scotia had come to visit Diona. She thought that if she rested, she would get better. Glenn reached for the medicine, but carelessly fell right onto the soft uplands of the giant. He began to drown in her breasts, quite literally. Dione took the medicine. The villagers said she scared them badly, but Dione had difficulty moving, so slow steps caused earthquakes. The elder apologized for the commotion. Apparently, the legend wasn't true. It was better to protect Diona from the cold, so there would be no more such misunderstandings. Arachnia had the honor of making warm clothes for Diona. Kay and Lorna decided to get the goddess's hair in order. Glenn asked Diona to stay in the village until she is fully recovered. Now our heroes can return home to the clinic. Ilya now works at Scythia. She brought an invitation to the anniversary of the construction of the canal. Such a job is just right for a harpy. Glenn invited Tisalia to dinner as a thank you for all the trouble in the village. The centaur was willing to risk her life that day, but the real reason for the giant's arrival even upset Tisalia. Safi, sitting on the ceiling, inserted her own barbed word to Tisalia. Safi admitted that she admires the princess. She is worthy of respect, if only because she came out against the goddess. And that's why Safi is going to make sure Glenn doesn't fall in love with the princess. Tisalia and Safi are not about to give in to each other. The girls are starting to get along better with each other. At the anniversary celebration, all the girls in the company gather. Dragon Lady is happy that the day has finally arrived, and she's also pleased with how Glenn is taking care of the health of those around him. The doctor noticed a lesion on Skadia's tail. The lady's speech from Kunai's mouth began. Ten years ago, she named this city with the proud name of Lindworm, in honor of the dragon that soars in the sky. In this city, humans and monsters began to live side by side. She believed that the dragon whose name the city bears would keep and protect the people of the city. The speech stopped abruptly. Scotia fell unconscious. The panic in the city has stopped. Safi and Glenn arrived at the central hospital. Dr. Cthulhu treating Scotia, even though Glenn was the first to come to the mistress's aid. Safi didn't like the idea of seeing Cthulhu. She was afraid Glenn would be attracted to the octopus again. However, as soon as Cthulhu saw the student, she immediately enveloped him in her tentacles. Cthulhu missed her students. Safi became tongue-tied and jealous of Glenn. An angry spark ran between the monsters. It turned out that Skadia had serious health problems, a very rare disease that affected the mistress's entire body. She has heart problems. Dragons are hard to treat. Their bodies resist even the most serious diseases. Dragons just suffer longer. Successful treatment is difficult even for Dr. Cthulhu. This time, Skadia's blood pressure is down. She'll be back on her feet soon. Without Scotia's consent, there's nothing the doctor can do. Cthulhu asks them to return to the clinic. Dr. Cthulhu's patient refuses treatment herself. Kunai reveals that Madame is planning to return to work. Glenn confirmed that Cthulhu does not treat patients against their will. He has adopted her knowledge and skill. However, Kunai can't just watch the mistress suffer. That is why she has come to Glenn for help. Kunai will prepare everything necessary for the examination in the council's main bedchamber. That's the bedroom. Safi is perplexed and opposed to Glenn being in Skadia's bed. 
The doctor tried to calm the snake down by saying it was a routine checkup. At the appointed time, Kunai led the doctors into the sleeping room. Glenn was to go in alone and Safi and Kunai would wait outside. The boy saw Scotia's full form for the first time. She gestured an invitation to come closer and asked in a whisper how he had gotten here. Glenn explained what the matter was. The dragon lady agreed to be examined, though she wasn't sure if he could cure her. Glenn was shocked at what he saw. A blue heart was protruding through her chest. It's a malignant tumor. It's growing throughout the blood vessels and controls the flow of blood throughout the body. Two hearts is a tremendous strain on the body. Skadia told her that dragons were not supposed to live on Earth. When her ancestors came down to Earth, they changed into other creatures, some of them human. Mistress is certain that this is what caused the illness. Glenn, however, is not so sure about that. He continued his inspection and picked up on some details in Skadia's body. It was a bit embarrassing to Mistress. Her tail and wings are very sensitive. The unpleasant sensation made Skadia cry. Kunai and Safi came in at the sounds they really didn't like the picture they saw. The furious girls were calmed down by Scotia saying that the inspection was over and it was time for her to go to bed. Glenn and Safi came in to ask for help with the surgery for Mistress. The more hands-on, the less danger to the patient. However, as long as Scotia has not consented to the surgery, Dr. Cthulhu will not operate on her. The procedure is too serious and dangerous. It's not just a tumor. This parasite has taken over a hundred vessels in her body. Cthulhu would do anything if she could. She had tried hundreds of times to convince Scotia to have the surgery. Glenn is confident he can talk the mistress down. No one is more willing to save Scotia than Dr. Cthulhu. Those words caught the octopus's ear. The pair had grown a lot since their days at the academy. Cthulhu praised the students in his own special way. The operation was going to be complicated. They needed to find another capable assistant who could move at the same pace as Cthulhu and knew how to handle the threads. Glenn had the right person for the job. Arachnia said no, she could not agree to perform the operation. If something bad happened during the operation, her company's reputation would suffer. However, Safi was able to convince the spider that she could wear a nurse's uniform like Safi's. Now they need to thoroughly prepare for the surgery, train Arachnia, and convince Scotia to consent. Glenn came to the forge. The sight of the man scared the Cyclops girl at first. She is afraid of those with two eyes. Glenn wants to order something from the master. Cyclops have problems with spatial vision, which the girl immediately confirmed when confronted with the worker, and because of awkwardness she caught her dress on a nail and tore it. Glenn got a slap on the wrist for seeing it. Glenn explained what he needed the special tools for. The job was expensive and not quick, and the foreman wanted to be done in a month. The master agreed to take on the task, but it was a difficult task to create a needle that could pierce the dragon's scales. The master entrusted this difficult task to Cyclops' maim. Arachnia was learning how to stitch. She was beginning to regret agreeing to this. Kunai revealed that the lady was still stubborn and would not agree to the surgery. Skadia despised the war between humans and monsters, so she devoted herself to creating the peaceful city of Lindworm. Now she has fulfilled her destiny, and it is her fate to die of the disease. Glenn decided to try and talk her together, however. Arachnia suggested that such a tactic would conversely cause Skadia to shut down even more. The Spider Woman suggested letting in other ways that would make Safi blush for Glenn. In the workshop, Tthulhu and Glenn looked at the final samples of the tools. The quality suited the octopus. However, the needles were not yet ready. Mame was working hard to create them. The master would like the girl to handle it herself. Glenn agrees. His first operation was also quite difficult. The guy remembered how Cthulhu had trained Glenn. Mame was laboring to create a needle and seemed to have figured something out. However, she was trying too hard and fainted. The master found her in that state. Mame was breathing. Her pulse was weak. Glenn cut her clothes to make it easier to breathe. The doctor assumed she had heat stroke and asked that she be moved to a cool place. Mame was able to mumble that she needed to finish her needles. Since a long time ago, she had dreamed of becoming a blacksmith to create peaceful things in times of peace. At that moment, Skadia appeared and asked Cyclops to create medical instruments. These words touched Cyclops to the core. Mame woke up in the hospital, Glenn explained what had happened to her, and the fact that he had to cut the clothing embarrassed the Cyclops even more. Arachnia handed the clothes to the girl and urged Glenn to be careful when he cut things on the girl.
After examination, Glenn concluded that Mame was suffering from motion sickness. The Cyclops has such good eyesight that the semicircular canals in her ears that sense movement quickly become overloaded. Repetitive up and down movements overload the canals causing vision to fog up and hallucinations to occur. Safi gave medicinal herbs that improved Mame's condition. The girl realized how needles could be made. Mame told her that the spinning wheel machine stretches the material and makes a wire of hard steel. The wire can be cut into pieces and turned into needles. The strength of the steel would withstand a dragon's scales. She made it! Needles like this would really work. If Mame continued like this, she could open her workshop. Glenn was heartily grateful to the girl. He will ask Dr. Cthulhu to start mass producing such needles. An unsure Mame thanked Glenn for entrusting her with such an important job. The doctor advised her to keep her head up when walking so she wouldn't bump into anything. However, Mame was embarrassed about her eyebrow, but Glenn assured her that she had nothing to be embarrassed about. Cyclops called the guy a horny pervert and ran away. Glenn continued to teach Arachnia how to stitch. Their closeness infuriated Safi, and she reminded Glenn that it was time for him to go to the hospital and stop by the workshop and the council. He wouldn't have time for dinner, so he asked to eat dinner without him. Arachnia advised Safi to be straightforward about her feelings in the doctor. However, the girl is already used to being alone. She knows that Glenn will always come back to her. Safi decided to have a bachelorette party and invited her friends to the tavern. The girls discussed a possible surgery. Tesalia's family helped with finding ingredients for anesthesia for Scadia. One of them was a drink called Dinzia, an oriental liquor that has a sedative effect on dragons. It should work for the mistress as anesthesia. Tesalia reminded Arachnia of her question about her true love for Glenn. Does that mean the spider woman knows what love is? Arachnia just likes the reciprocity between lovers. It is believed that the pinky fingers of lovers are bound with a red thread. However, the spider woman can bond with anyone. This thread will make the girls friends forever and ever. The spider lady is up to something. Safi caught her red-handed. Arachnia wanted to steal something important. A gift for Dr. Glenn. Safi wouldn't let her do that. The spider intended to escape, but Tessalia was waiting for her downstairs. Arachnia has no escape route. The girls will not surrender the spider woman to the guards. Safi realizes that she worries a lot, and so she may give in to a bad habit. The more Arachnia gets close to someone, the more she wants to take possession of that person's stuff. Safi also assumed that in the Harpy Village, the spider woman was testing her, seeing if they would remain friends cowardly act. Arachnia always looking for someone who needed her. Tessalia never doubts her bond with Kay and Lorna because she trusts them. Relationships don't need to be tested, they need to be constantly strengthened. The girl's words touched the spider woman's heart. Arachnia tried to steal the dragon scales to test the doctor. Even if she had succeeded in doing so, Arachnia would continue to doubt her friends. The spider woman only assumed that they would make up with her anyway because they needed help with the surgery. Glenn confuses Arachnia by continuing to teach like nothing happened as if he has no memory of past events. Arachnia doesn't believe a single living soul and wants to find out what secrets Dr. Glenn is hiding. The spider woman is not herself as she began working alongside Glenn, he doesn't see her as a villain, and the spider woman has no idea what he's thinking. Safi asked Arachnia, leading questions to the spider woman, based on her answers, it was clear that she was sick with love for Dr. Glenn. Arachnia's denial made Safi and Tessalia smile, for they had gone through similar feelings long ago. Glenn shows up to talk Scadia into surgery again. The mistress refuses the operation because she is sure that she has finished all business in this city, that she has already created the peaceful city of Lindward, and that is the end of her destiny, so she should just accept her fate. Glenn disagrees with this opinion. There are beautiful people and monsters living in Lindward. Wouldn't the lady like to see what the already great city she created could become? Living long is too boring. What can she do? For example, spoil herself with delicious food, buy jewelry, try to fall in love. Mistress asked to put her on the ground and at the end she agreed to the surgery. The removal of Skadia's tumor begins. The whole team is set up for success. The first incision is made by Cthulhu. Moving on to removing the tumor, the patient's body temperature and blood pressure rose. In a dangerous situation, the body temperature rises so that the dragon can spew flames. Ignition can happen at any moment. Cthulhu asks Safi and Arachnia to stand back. If prolonged any longer, the internal organs will catch fire. The doctors have no time for doubts. Glenn proceeded to cut away the tumor. 
After the successful surgery, Scadia gave a speech to the people of the town. There was no longer a need for Kunai to serve as the voice of the mistress. Safantina was sick, so Glenn looked after her. Scadia decided to visit them herself at the clinic and thank them. Safi had a cold, so the doctor tended to the girl. Something was wrong with the snake's speech. Glenn began to examine the assistant's mouth. This confused and agitated Safi. Stomatitis had formed on her tongue. He began to treat her tongue with honey. Safizi's jaw was tired and she was uncomfortable with this intimacy with the doctor. Glenn said he had a house call, but he would be back in time for dinner. Outside he met Skadia and Kunai, whose carriage had broken down. Upon seeing the doctor, the mistress swooped in with a hug and called him for a secret rendezvous, calling him Brother Glenn. Kunai pulled her mistress away from the doctor, however Glenn fixed her up. The girl opened her robe and asked if that turned the doctor on. Not at all. He buttoned her robe and asked to meet another time, now he had to go on a patient call. Mame walked by and fixed Skadia's wagon. The mistress thanked the girl personally this time for creating the needles and fixing the carriage. She presented them with barrels of wine as a token of her gratitude. Glenn asked Mame to watch the barrels and ran to the patient, leaving the confused girl alone. Arachnia came to check on her sick friend and offered to cook dinner with Safi. At the Harpy village, the goddess Diona helped with the grounds and presented fruit she had picked up in the mountains. Mame sat alone with the barrels waiting as Glenn returned to the girl. Tisalia had come at the request of the doctor, who had used the services of a transportation company. The princess is flattered that it was her that he sought her help. After all, she considers him her future husband. However, with all due respect for the centaur's feelings, Glenn was not interested in getting married. Tisalia revealed that she and Safi had agreed to fight openly and honestly as rivals. Along the way, the doctor met the monster family to whom he had previously informed of the pregnancy. Safi and Arachnia waited for Glenn to return. Safi hoped that no one else would fall in love with him. Arachnia began to describe various love situations that might happen to Glenn on the way home. Safi, on the other hand, was sure that such a thing was impossible. Elijah and the other harpies flew in with gifts from the village for Dr. Glenn. At that moment, the guy was just returning. Safi pushed away the girls surrounding the guy and said she felt much better thanks to his treatment. There were many barrels and baskets of food and drink on the street, with passers-by giving it all to him on the way home. Skadia and Kunai came to the clinic and brought dragon rolls. The master and the other blacksmiths also decided to join in the communal feast. In the evening, the tables were littered with delicious food and there was laughter and warm-hearted conversations all around. It's not easy to love such a popular personality. The three competitors got another very serious. Glenn thanked Scadia for the classy evening. The world had changed for Mistress after the surgery. She had begun to socialize with her subjects and she had truly healed. Mistress called him brother, to which Glenn asked to be called something else. Safi twisted the doctor with her tail in a fit of jealousy and began reprimanding him for his lewd behavior. She wanted to lick the doctor's cheek. Tisalia intervened in the commotion. While the girls were distracted, Scadia took the doctor away with her. As a result, all the girls in love piled on the young doctor. Their story is just beginning.